If there is one thing I have learned about Montreal Canadiens fans over the past 24 hours, it's that Yuri Slavkovsky is a really big deal. And no, that should not come as a surprise to me or to you or to anybody who has been paying attention to the Canadians. I mean, yesterday we just made a video talking about the new Slavkovsky drama, and the notion, ill-informed I would say, that he is a bust. But when it comes to the conversation we're having today about the Canadiens' first overall pick, let's head over to an article published on TVA Sports that goes over an interesting idea that I don't think anybody has really talked about other than these guys. So, this article will be linked in the description. It's French, translated into English, and the article title reads this. An eight-year contract for Yuri Slavkovsky. It's urgent. The GM of the Montreal Canadiens, Kent Hughes, will be able to grant an eight-year extension to the forward Yuri Slavkovsky starting on July 1st, and according to Antoine Roussel, there is no doubt that is what he should do. Now, of course, before we go over into the idea, let's talk about the guy who's saying this. Big shout out over to Mr. Antoine Roussel, former Vancouver Canuck, former Dallas Star, and former Arizona Coyote. He never played for the Montreal Canadiens, but he is French. And no, I don't mean French Canadian, I mean French. He was born in France. And wow, I'm literally just looking at his numbers. I did not realize he had a 31 point season in his first year in Vancouver in 65 games played. That's crazy. 118 penalty minutes on top of that as well. What a stud. But Antoine Roussel certainly had himself a career in the National Hockey League, but because he is French, he has indeed made multiple appearances on French-Canadian programming, talking about the Canadians, talking about different stories around the Francophone world. And just by listening to some of these interviews, the guy has a good head on his shoulders. Even in Vancouver, he was always a good interview. Even if English wasn't his first language, he was still very articulate. So hearing this conversation pop itself up on TVA Sports, I thought it was interesting, and I wanted to go out there and discuss this. So here is what Roussel says on the program on JIC. For me, the Montreal Canadiens have no choice but to sign Yuri Slavkovsky to an eight-year contract. What we have seen from him over the last two months shows that this is not a flash in the pan. He's a confident guy who, despite being 19 years old in a Montreal market, is able to handle the pressure. He believed in himself. He continued to work despite external comments. It seems he is a work lover. He still takes shots after practice, he's still on the ice, his desire to improve is so strong that it must be contagious within the team. That's why, in my opinion, it's important to reward the success he's having at the moment, and it'll show everyone that hard work pays off. And included in this article is a video segment from the JIC show, wherein you can see Roussel making these comments. But essentially, what I wanted to discuss in this video was that idea of an eight-year contract extension and pretty much get a mind map going amongst Canadians fans as to what this contract, should it get done in this way, what it would really look like. Because I get it, you know, eight-year extensions, they have the potential to be huge steals. You talk about the Leon Drysaddles of the world getting $8.5 million a season, and that was a contract that was seen by many as kind of an overpayment when it was initially signed. And then everybody shut up when they realized that Drysaddle was getting 100-point seasons back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. You also have, on the flip side, the eight-year contracts that completely fizzle out, and the ones that don't look good after just a few years. The one that comes to my mind right away is Jesperi Kotkaniemi, because his contract right now is $4.8 million a year. It's eight years long. It goes on till 2030. And this is a fourth-line player on a Hurricanes team that really expected more out of him. So sometimes the eight-year deal can really pay off, other times it can look like a really stupid mistake just a few years down the line, and I am by no means comparing Yuri Slavkovsky to Leon Dreisaitl or to Jesperi Kotkaniemi. I'm just saying that there are different levels as to what an eight-year deal could accomplish should Yuri sign that kind of a contract with the Habs. He's on the books till the end of 24-25. So, the Montreal Canadiens' window to sign him starts in July. And if you wanted to say for Yuri Slavkovsky that he may have a little bit more of an extended period of growth in the NHL short term then maybe you don't even see a contract the Canadians give to him in the 2024 summer. Maybe Slavkovsky goes the Elias Pettersson route and he says, hey, I'm an RFA at the end of my deal. 
I think I have a lot more to prove, so I'm gonna play out this final year of my contract and then we'll negotiate. It's not like I can leave, because I'm an RFA. I don't have the right to just up and away go wherever it is that I want. But what I will have is leverage. Because if Yaroslavkovsky signs a contract today, he can't sign a contract today, but let's say he signs a contract today. Let's say he finishes off the season with the current 44 points he's projected the finishing off the season at. Heck, let's make it 50, just because a lot of this production includes the pace he had at the beginning of the year, which was not as good. Let's say Slavkovsky finishes off the year with 50 points, and the Canadians say, okay, we want to give you an eight-year deal. We feel you're worth, let's say, four and a half, five million dollars a year. You finished off the year with 50 points. You're going to be good. Eight years, five million bucks, that's 40 million dollars. That's a lot of money, right? And let's say Yuri Slavkovsky says, no, I'm kind of lowballing here on purpose because that's the point of negotiations, but let's say Slavkovsky says, no, screw that, I'm not going five million, I'm going to play another season, and I'm going to get 70 points that year. Let's say Slavkovsky finishes off 2024-2025 with a 70-point season, he gets, I don't know, 30 goals, and everything's looking fantastic. Caulfield, Suzuki, fantastic. Slavkovsky all of a sudden has the right to go out there and say, hey, wait a minute, I just got the same amount of points as Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki, I'm younger, I'm bigger, and they're making 7.8? Give me 8.5. Give me 9. Give me 9.5 by 8 years if you want to keep me down long term, because I'm going to get better, and I'm going to continue growing and building what it is this Canadiens hockey team has been building with these two other guys that are making $7.8 million a year. Even talking about the other argument, I mean, Brendan Gallagher is making 6.5 on this team. You don't think Yaroslavkovsky goes out there and looks and says, hey, I probably deserve to be paid more than that guy. Like, sure, he has the longevity and he's had this leadership type of profile and everybody loves him and he's this and he's that, but come on, I'm outproducing him. I'm better. There's a very big entitlement that can exist in contract negotiations with NHL athletes. So... For Yuri Slavkovsky, there very much is an opportunity for him to wait it out at the end of this season, head into next season with no extension signed, have an even better year in 2024-2025, and then have all the leverage in the world by the time the 2025 offseason comes, along with all the other stuff that 2025 is going to bring. You know, Raul Menendez is going to rule the world, and orbital VSATs will start taking over our lives. 2025 is so close, man. That's kind of wild. But either way, I agree with Antoine Roussel's point where if you wanted to sign your Slavkovsky to the best contract value possible, you probably have to do it immediately. Like, finish off this season and then right away, hey, here's $40 million. Here's eight years, five mil per. Please sign. And if he says no, that's a little bit too little. Okay, here's six. Six million dollars a year for eight years. Please sign your Slavkovsky. Please, please, please. And if he does sign, then great. You hopefully have yourselves what is going to be the next superstar in Montreal signed on for cheap. But of course, if this goes through and he ends up going the Yasperi Kotkaniemi route, then all of a sudden you're looking at a contract that may be buyout worthy within a few years. But I think if you've been following my channel and you've been seeing my thoughts about Yuri Slavkovsky, you probably know that I'm on the more optimistic side of his development. I think he's going to be very good and fantastic as his career goes on. But for now, Antoine Roussel is bringing up the argument on Montreal TV. Kent Hughes, you've got a lot to think about when it comes to negotiating this next contract, eh? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about a Yuri Slavkovsky extension. How much do you think it would go for if it is signed at eight years long? What do you think the dollar amount is? Is it over or under 6.5 mil? If Yara Slavkovsky decides to wait and has a 2024-2025 season that we all think he can have, let's say he gets that 60-70 point marker, let's say he gets 30 goals, how much is he worth then if he negotiates in 2025's offseason? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.